Good evening. Uh, I'd like to introduce you to Paul O'Hagan, former chairman of the Summon GFC. Paul comes from a very uh, prominent GAF family in the Summon. His father uh, was founder and member of the present G uh, club and actually played in the older uh, teams prior to the present formation. Um, Paul has sons all play now on the underage uh, system. He has been chairman up till about what well, almost two years ago now, Paul. Oh nine, yeah. Yeah. What's your what's your first memories of the GAA, Paul? What what's your, your, your basic first memories? Um I suppose the first memories were um probably as a very young as a young child, um, growing up in a, a family where football was probably the conversation every day. Uh, going to matches from a very young age, you know, uh, club matches, um, yourself probably playing at the time fairly. But uh, you know, and that's that's the way things was then there was the GA was the uh, How important was it in your family? It, it was everything because I'd say the GAA then there was nothing, you know, there was nothing and especially in our own rural community. Um the meeting, the meeting place was the football field, and you know, and that's where people went, and that's where you saw, saw everyone, you know. So, um, probably the earliest memories was back in the car heading the football matches all over, all over the county. Mm -hmm. You played football yourself? Yeah. Um. So I, I played. My my first team was Care Couple, believe it or not. Um. There was no under age, there was no under 10s, 12s, or nothing like that there. I never, I was at that age. Um, at the time, um, my dad helped set up a St. Joseph's uh, amalgamation between the Summon and Pines Pass back in the, I don't know, 77. And um, they only had an under 16 team and a minor team, I think. And uh, I played for Kerr Cropping for three or four years. And then when I got about 12 or so, I left Kerr Cropping and came back then and played. There's no question of you staying in Kerr Cropping? No, definitely not, definitely not. That wouldn't have been, that wouldn't have been an option. Uh, <laughs> but myself and a few other boys in Pines Pass, we all played um, football in Kerr Cropping because that was the only football there was at that time. Yeah, yeah. You know. Uh, has the club uh, got any better at underage or oh, is the organisation better now? Mm. Oh, definitely. Um, you know, the, the club, well, the Malcolm club has, has got teams now from under eight right up to minor mm -hmm. um, at every level. Um, so oh, definitely it's, it's a whole lot different now. Uh, you spent a bit of time in England, working in England. Uh, was the GAA important over there as well? Or was it, what did it mean to you being away from home? Oh, um, you, you missed home. It's a wee bit like the times now. Emigration was a big thing then. There wasn't much, there wasn't much work about. Um, back the time I went to, I went to England, I think in 1985. Um, and People think now there's not much work about now, and everybody thinks there's something new. It's nothing new at all. That's exactly what it was like in 1985, and we had very little work. And we went over till um, I don't know to work in London, and I was only 18, 19 at the time. So it was just a time whenever I would have been really coming into the Summon Senior Team, and I went to London for six, seven years. So actually, from us about 18, there was 25. I wasn't, I wasn't here at all, you know. Mm -hmm. And did you keep in touch with the club? And oh, it did, yeah, yeah. Oh, there had been a, a weekly report, you know, you'd arrive home and um, uh, at that time, shortly after we left, and someone began to come fairly successful, as you remember, back in 87. You know, we were, I was only away a year or two before that and, and Peter Makem came in and we sort of became a, a junior level, a high profile mm -hmm. club, you know. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, you were keeping up to date and well, obviously no mobile phones or nothing that time you'd arrive home on a Sunday evening and I would have give you a, a report and uh, he'd have been uh, very proud to have reported the way that someone was going then because there was a lot of dark days before that. Obviously your father was very heavily involved in the club in the formation of the present club and in and, and my time he was always very prominent and was he a big influence on you? Definitely, definitely so. Um, I think when you were you were brought up in the family that got there and for me was for me was very young, you know, dad been going to meet me was obviously on the committee there and, and he managed the senior team a few years, you know, whenever we were young. So um every Sunday it was a matter of 
where are we going? Where where's the match today? And there's no there's never a case of are we going or will we go? It where is it? You know yeah. where we're yeah. going. You know it was um, mass home dinner and the match. You know mm-hmm. uh, it was home or away. Uh, you you were involved in the committee a lot over the last few years. You were a uh, chairman for a number of years. Uh, what what encouraged you to, to get involved in the committee or why did you? Well, probably the committee, first of all, um, I came back from London and I got married in 1992. And probably for the first year or two after that, I remember I was living down in a wee cottage down beside Paddy McCourt's and uh, Denny Meehan, I hope he's happy, used to come down and ask me to go on the committee, you know, and he used to come down every year. And the first year or two, you know, we had, you know, youngsters maybe one and then the two within you know 12 mo- an hour and 12 months later and you know probably times was busy for the first few years i sort of declined due to the young family and family commitment commitments so then after a few years i went on the committee then and um it was just something that's always going to happen you had kids coming up that's where my dad had been um he, he'd been on the committees and uh, you sort of you felt it was you know just the right thing to do you know and it's something you wanted to do um, he was well at the time, and you know, pleased that uh, I suppose I was following on where, mm. where he left. Follow the tradition. You know, follow the tradition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, your your whole family was involved. Your brothers mm. uh, were all involved in the club. You're all all involved in club development. Is not right? Is that's it? right. That's right. Oh, everybody would be doing their bit. Well, partner now he's he's moved out to from Gath, um, married and living out there, but he's still involved with the club out there, um. Eugene's involved here and uh, Tommy whenever he gets time with milking cows and that it's not easy but you know he'll do whatever he can for the club mm-hmm. um, the county uh, our, your county uh, you follow the county obviously over the years uh, was that important to you as well definitely it was um, it was always part and parcel it was another thing you always you know the, the county matches you, you always went to them you know um you know, I suppose I was back the time when Armagh got to the first All Ireland in my memory in seventy seven. I was a young fella then and I got the all the games up as far as the final and didn't get that because of the ticket scarcity, I suppose, and mm-hmm. the people jumping on the bandwagon even back then, but I didn't get that final. But back, you know, from the late seventies, early eighties, a lot of a lot of good memories. Like we had a fairly successful Armagh team at the time. And um, I always remember my dad, he always, it was always two things he wanted to see in, in Gaelic football, and that was like, someone to win a junior championship in Armagh to win an All Ireland. And thankfully, he saw the two of them before he passed away, you know. So, um, you know, someone to win the junior championship was a big, big thing, you know, mm-hmm. for, for the family and well, for, the, for the community, for the area, but a massive thing for the family. I know, I know you're married to County Down, lady. Was it ever an option that you would defect to County Down to support? That, that I would jump ship the county. Jump ship the county. I don't think that ever was an option. Um, <laughs> Trying to get Jenny to uh, jump ship over here, but that didn't work either. Like, but um, she's done. She's done a lot for the club now. From from she came to live in with someone, you know, she run the youth club and different things. So she mm-hmm. definitely helped out in uh, whatever way she could. Um, how important do you think the club is to the community? Uh, if there was never a club here, would the community be the same? Do you think? Definitely not. De- definitely not. Um, like, but back to, even when we were young, there, there was still certain families here. Maybe went to schools and points pass and things like that there. And the only time you saw them apart from that, it's not like now. But maybe wasn't wasn't as many social events or mm-hmm. there wasn't the uh, um, websites and. Um, Facebooks and all this crack. There was none of that, you know. And the only time you get talking to anybody or meeting them was was on the football field. It was like I remember when my first memories. I remember the field over um, Jimmy McCaffrey's field at the time. Uh, would be my first memory of the summer in a football field. And I remember going up there, training. We used to train I think on a Thursday night before the seniors, and you know, and there wouldn't have been seven or eight of us, you know. And I remember the coach uh, was Philip Quinn, and he was he was learning this one thing always sticks in my mind. He was learning us how to lift the ball, and Philip was there. And it's not like the modern day coach at all. There was no 
designer year track suits. Philip had the flat cap on and the black slip on shoes and he was learning us how to lift the ball and Philip went first and we all stood in the line and watched Philip demonstrate, you know, how to lift the ball. But the basic skills the same, they mightn't have been the, the same clothes wear or uh, fancy designer gear, but um, the, the mm-hmm. basics of the Gaelic football remained the same. Uh, obviously the, the facilities uh, here now are a lot better than what they were when you were younger. Is, is that a good thing? Obviously it is a good thing. Now. Yeah, yeah. Massive, massive. And I suppose the, the fact that, you know, they had their own uh, their own hall and community centre now within the, the GAA grounds. It's, it's a mm-hmm. massive thing, you know, and everything comes together under the one roof as such, you know. So um, uh, the facilities now is second to none and an mm-hmm. essential part of um, the club. Well, someone always had a ladies team. Um, in my memory, they always had ladies in the committee. You think is that important as well? Mm. Um, as long as I remember, you know, I remember as a f- youngster, seven, eight, nine year old, maybe up in the summer field, and um, ladies team. As long as I remember, I always remember a ladies team and always a fairly successful ladies team. You know, and um, the ladies played a massive part. You know on and off the field, like off the field, you know, any of the functions are, you know, different things, even on the committees, there's always, there's always been ladies in our committee and mm-hmm. the, they play a, a vital role. Mm-hmm. Was there anybody in the area, other than your father, that was a big influence on you? Um, probably as when we started training then, you know, after the film era, whenever we get into it a bit, um, Oliver Morton would have had a big impact on, on on a lot of us you know we you know would have took always took time with um with the younger ones you know trying to mm-hmm. develop football skills and that and Oliver would have had a fairly fairly good you've, you've done a bit of coaching yourself to it under his teams mm. uh, did you enjoy that or? definitely definitely done um teams in under 10s and 12s and 14s and that's probably as far as I went because when they, when boys get to fourteen, they're getting a lot of top level coaching from uh, ex county players and all these yeah, in schools. Yeah. And um, my level of coaching mightn't have been up to their standards. So when it came to that, there I would have maybe stepped back and let mm-hmm. let somebody else take over. Um, do you think is there any difference in the GA in Northern Ireland rather than the South? Is it more important here than it is in the South? Do you think? Don't know. I think I think it's I think it's important all, all over the country. Um, I don't know that it's any more important up here. It cer- certainly is important to us, and uh, I know in rural communities here it is. But I would imagine it's it's equally as as important mm-hmm. in the south of Ireland. Mm-hmm. Hey, as I've touched on before, you you were you were worked in England for six years, and obviously the GAA and immigration is is, is very important. A hey, our previous uh, contribution there said that they went to Canada and uh, that was how they got to know mm. uh, their way about was through a GAA club and through contacts and things like that. Mm. So do you think the GAA is important as it regards immigration? And Massive, even more so. I think it's nearly more important to tell Irish people going to cities, you know, throughout the world, London, New York, wherever it may be. I've never been to New York, but I've been in London for long enough and um, GA connections definitely brings people together people get employment out of it they get living accommodation out of it you know everybody if you if you play football or affiliate at the club you know every, everything became so much so much easier for you you know with it mm-hmm. well there's no doubt about that yeah well thanks very much for your contribution paul um